Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is a podcast for you. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown, and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, where we talk about all those things you never knew were happening when you just wanted to buy or sell a house, or you wanted to be a realtor. You had no idea what you were stumbling into. And today, I'm excited to introduce y'all to somebody you're going to really, really enjoy hearing from, and you might not be able to unsee what you're going to hear from Joe Batista today. Joe, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lee. So tell all the listeners where you're located, what you do, what part of the world you're in, that kind of fun stuff. Hi, Lee. Uh, this is Joe. I'm in uh, Syracuse, New York, where it's uh, warm and sunny, 27 degrees. And my company is Haven Environmental. We do a lot of different inspection services. Uh, one of the main ones we do is uh, buyers and inspection services for uh, real estate transactions. Well, we all know that in real estate, the inspection process is sometimes the most uncomfortable part of a transaction because it involves so many unknowns. So um, before you tell your story about unknowns, I just want to give you the two ground rules of the podcast. The only rule I have about language is you can't use the F-bomb, GD, or see you next Tuesday because I'm allergic to those three hateful words. And when you have real parties involved, just don't use their names. That way, only they could identify themselves. And so with that being said, you've got to tell this story. It's crazy. Okay. Well, let me jump right into it. The story, really the moral of the story is uh, never, ever, ever, ever uh, buy a piece of property that you haven't physically walked through yourself. The reason why is because a few weeks ago, I received a call from a couple that wanted to buy a house in a, an inner city neighborhood. Uh, it was a two-story home, and uh, they asked me to go do a home inspection. I didn't know at the time they hadn't been in the property. So uh, we uh, uh, do the agreement, and I go over, and I do the inspection. Uh, they weren't there, and neither of the realtors was there at the time either. So I'm inspecting the property, and uh, things begin to crop up, and then more things begin to crop up, and uh, I get inside the house. And uh, the floors are pitched solid six, six inches from one side to the next. Um, and so it, literally walking uphill, uh, the house inside has twisted around um, in, the, in the wood skeleton uh, to where the stairs are, are almost a ladder in some areas. And so I go into the basement and I'm looking around and I see that all the floor joists that hold up the first floor have cracked and split wide open and are now being held up by a whole bunch of different homemade makeshift kind of things, mainly by old bed rails, which um, if you, anybody who has a bed knows that you have a headboard and a footboard and then these two metal uh, rails that hold the box spring in place. Those were repurposed to hold up the house and not doing a very good job at it. Some of them were beginning to blow and were as tight as a the guitar string. So you're saying that this <laughs> you're saying this house is being held up by those metal things that were your first step up from having a mattress on the floor, the free things the mattress shop gives you before you have a real bed. Those little skinny right. pieces of metal are holding this house up. It, literally holding up a two story home. Um, <laughs> and 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 it had already imploded six inches in the center of the home. Uh, the homeowner looked like he had also repurposed some cardboard boxes. Uh, to replace uh, his furnace ducts that had rotted out, uh, which were not exactly doing a good job either. Uh, but wait a minute. Is it, is it cardboard a natural insulator? <laughs> um, I guess so, but this cardboard had um, uh, also suffered some of the uh, effects of the house shifting as well. Um, the sides, it, it just, no, I guess the answer is <laughs> Uh, in your own home or anybody else's. Uh, so I, I, I see this in the basement. I immediately begin uh, to head out of the basement because I didn't want to be buried under the pile of rubble. And as I was heading towards the door, I took a quick look at the plumbing because I, I am a home inspector. So uh, I just wanted to uh, 
uh, check that out. And it appeared that the solution to some of the plumbing problems that occurred as the house was beginning to crack and implode uh, was to catch the water coming out of the waste lines in beer coolers set on the floor of the uh, basement, which was enough for me. So by waste lines, you mean somebody upstairs flushes the commode? And it's emptying out into beer coolers in the basement. Uh, yes, if you can follow along with that, that's the uh, that's the scenario in that particular home. So um, I exit the home. I do the report. I send it to the sell uh, the buyers, and uh, they call me immediately. Say, uh, um, Joe, we're very concerned. Uh, what is going on, and what kind of report is this? Um, <laughs> you think? I, so, and I had to say, guys, you have been in the house, right? Uh, and I come to find out that they had not been in the house. In fact, they had not even been in the country. They were buying this house from where, from long distance, from where they were overseas in Europe. They saw the listing online. Uh, they took a look at the realtor's uh, photos of the house, which were fantastically done. Um, the photographer should have some award for that, uh, and thought it looked like a really great house. Again, back around to the moral of the story is please don't get that far into a deal unless you've gone through the home yourself uh, and don't rely uh, so heavily on the photographs that are advertising that home online or any. Of course. Now, I will point out, if they were overseas, they could have hired a buyer agent to be their eyes and ears on the ground. But you're saying they were being unrepresented as well. They were just going through the listing agent and then they had you to be their eyes and ears after contract. That's correct. That's exactly what uh, they were doing. And maybe that's how you do it in the um, country of origin where they were, but uh, probably not a good idea here in the United States. You know, and this is, I don't, I don't know all the parties involved, but it seems kind of sad to me that the listing agent has to have known that house was in less good condition than the photograph showed and didn't lay it out there for that buyer unless they fluffed it up so much nobody could tell, which is a shame. Right. I had a I had an in-depth conversation with the buyers because I assumed that they knew there, there was going to be major work that had to be done in that property to jack it back up, get it straightened out, and then basically it would, it would come right down to the skeleton and be rebuilt. Um, and I thought maybe they had plans to buy it for the piece of property it was on or get into a big project. Uh, but they had no idea they were going to have to put any money in it after they did the deal, after they closed. Wow. So how did they even find you, Joe? They just Google you or did somebody give them your name or how'd they get a good home inspector relationship? Because you and I know all inspectors aren't created equally either. Uh, yes, they found me online. Um, uh, and they took a look at my website and uh, checked out my credentials, and uh, they gave me a call. So were they able to, did they consummate this purchase, or did they walk away after seeing the depth of what was going on with it? Uh, they, they couldn't uh, go through with that. So they spent a few hundred bucks on you and saved themselves thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, yes, um, they, they did that, and uh, a lot of uh, heartache probably looking for a place to live when they did land in the United States. Wow. To I'm still mostly upset about the fact that the waste was dumping into a beer cooler in the basement, to be honest with you. That upsets me more than crooked floors or a house that's held up by hot bars from a mattress. Well, if you don't flush very often, eventually it evaporates. More. <laughs> well, now that's, that's, a, that's an Adam Sandler movie. I don't think they've made that one yet, but maybe they can. They can listen to this for material, Joe. <laughs> so it seems to me that in this instance, as a home inspector, you know that there's different personality types that make up your end of the industry. Some people are fear mongers and some people will fluff over anything. What is your biggest advice for any home buyer or home seller if they're having an inspection done before they list the house? What would be your advice for things they should ask or know about the inspection process before they get into it? Well, one, have a conversation with the home inspector. Uh, match your needs to your home inspector's qualifications and get comfortable with what he's going to do and take a look at a few of his reports and understand some of the stuff that he will call out. And oh, well, hang on a minute. I, I've never heard that before. So you think it's they should ask for a sample um, copy of a report you've done in the past? I love that idea. 
Oh, sure. Yeah, that's a that's a common practice up here. Um, I I actually on our blog I recommend in, in one of the articles that uh, uh, buyers tag in their home inspector early in their search process, and there should there should be at least on our company there's no reason why the home inspector can't be an advisor all the way through until they've narrowed down their search and they put in that offer and then they already have an existing relationship with that inspector and they bring him in then to do the property. That's a, a, a much cleaner way to do things. Uh, a lot of a lot of folks see a lot of stuff and I encourage people as they're shopping, just send me the photos and if you have any questions, I can tell you what you're looking at and why it's important or it's not important to the, uh, to the purchase. So you see yourself as more of a partner to the consumer in the process than a vendor? Uh, correct. Um, uh, we, we use the tagline, Trusted Advisors. That's very cool. Okay, so since we also have a lot of realtors who listen to this podcast, what advice would you give them on selecting a home inspector to be their partner in the process? Because as we know, every busy realtor's got to have a trusted home inspector on whom to lean. As far as I can tell, the realtors control about 80% of the home inspection work. They're the ones that have already built the trust with the client. And if they say use this particular home inspector or this particular home inspector, the client usually follows their guidance and, and does that. So I think the realtors should be qualifying those home inspectors as well, more than just fast turnaround times and a down and dirty real quick uh, uh, inspection report, keep things moving along. That's a little bit of work on the realtor side as well. Just this past week, we were approved by New York State to uh, provide continuing education instruction for realtors in this particular area. Oh, good. We'll be doing that up here soon. So you'll help them understand what's in the report and what it means. The whole process and get them some of their continuing education credits knocked out at the same time. Okay, so in your Syracuse, New York area, if anybody is in need of a professional home inspector, how can they find you and all this fantastic information you keep mentioning, Joe? A lot of that information is on our website, uh, which links to our Facebook page, obviously. Um, and the website address is www.haven, H-A-V-E-N, environmental.com. So if you're listening to this while you're driving down the road or while you're out getting your afternoon steps in for your Fitbit, all of Joe's contact information will be in the show notes for this episode. So if you have any need for a home inspector professional who covers many different angles, you can find him in Syracuse, New York, and I bet he's got contacts elsewhere if you need them. Joe, thank you for appearing on the podcast and sharing your expertise with the whole industry. Thanks, Lee. And if you are listening to this and you're a realtor, broker, investor, inspector, lender, or a consumer who's got your own crazy story about something you saw or wish you hadn't seen in dealing with real estate, shoot me a message and I'll be glad to feature you on the podcast. And until next time, make sure you subscribe for more episodes and we will bring you more crazy shit in real estate. See ya. for joining us this week on the Crazy Shit in Real Estate podcast. If you liked what you heard, please visit crazyshitinrealestate.com where you can access the full show notes for this episode, additional content produced exclusively for listeners, and much, much more. 